to big businesses that ship their profits out of Canadian communities. An alternative that is built for everyone. An alternative that is built on Canadian values. We are a different kind of business. We are member-owned. We are co-op. Yeah, we do. I think we're one of the few teams here that doesn't have any subs. I was going to say, yeah, that's a, there's a lot of different players out there. And, and what's up with your guys? Uh, well, Matt and Trev both, uh, or sorry, Matt and Josh had tested positive earlier in the week, so they uh, decided to stay back, even though their symptoms weren't bad, but didn't want to take some risk taking, taking the virus. Okay, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. We might be back on here, are we? Oh, live seconds ago. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. We're uh, in Swift Current here for the the SCT Players Championship, and we're into the qualifying round on Sunday. And we've got uh, Team Kelly Knapp is up against uh, Team Rowan Kleider, uh, less a couple of his players. And uh, we're looking for a really good match. And I've got uh, Brian McKeska here alongside myself, Dean Kleider, and we're going to try to make this a fun game to, to broadcast. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Dean. I'm uh, glad to be doing this with you. It should be fun. And in addition to being the commentators, we are also opposing coaches in this match, so uh, that should be fun as well. Absolutely. This will be great to see some different perspectives of uh, perhaps strategy and I'm sure that it'll, it'll be a lot of fun and a, a good learning for, for everyone. So Mike Armstrong here looking to throw uh, just back into the rings and maybe uh, freeze onto that yellow or that red rock that's just outside the house. And uh, with Hammer, they're obviously still trying to generate a deuce here in that first end. So the guys were saying after practice that they, they thought the ice was just a little bit heavier this morning than it has been for the rest of the weekend. So it'll be interesting to see if we have a few draws come up short or if they adjust to that quickly. Yeah, for sure. You know, Brian, I think the main reason for that is they haven't played since Saturday. They've been off. Uh, they only played two games Friday and one game Saturday. And the team right. fighter has played two games Friday and three games yesterday going, starting at 8.30 in the morning and finishing at just after midnight last night. So it'll be interesting yeah, to see. Yeah, they got a full day. <laughs> a little miscue there by Trevor. So they're gonna, now the, the two all of a sudden becomes a definite option here for Team Nap. Armstrong will attempt to hit and stick around, if you will, and try to avoid the setting up a double. And still lots of rocks in play with just about half of them being thrown so far this end. And this one is really curling up too, and I don't know that he's going to stick around. Yeah, that really did come up. I'm sitting right behind the sheet and that uh, that curled a lot with that outside in out turn. Mike was actually lucky to make contact on that. So that was a little more curl than we've seen on the 12 foot line in earlier draws, Brian? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The third Trevor Johnson attempts uh, the same turn. And uh, sit and stick here. And it seems to be running a little bit straighter. Both these teams are 
fighting for a spot to the all-important tanker. And uh, I think maybe the NAP team has already secured one, perhaps. And, uh, yes, okay. I believe they have. I, I think by qualifying in this event, they, they assured themselves of uh, getting a berth in the tanker. All right. I think really now they're they're interested in, in getting a higher seed in the tankard, which will be important with a 12-team tankard because the first four seeds, of course, will get set ahead one. So that's kind of their goal today is to uh, earn as many SCT points as possible to improve their seeding. Yeah, and do, do you think it'll go to a, a self-seeding as well? But I understand, obviously, if you're seeded higher, people are going to view that you're higher too, but... Yeah, I think it is self-seeded, you're right, uh, but I, I think the, most of the teams will look at points and, you know, they'll look at the winner of this field as well and, uh, and give, give some extra consideration to that. Yeah. Uh, just for the viewers that don't know, there's, there's four teams from the, the SAS Curling Tour that pre-qualify for the Tankard and then four teams from the CTRS standings, which would be, include all the spiels that you play in outside of Saskatchewan. And then there will be next, in two weeks time, I think it is, Brian, there's a last chance spiel at Nutana in Saskatoon, which will declare the other four reps to make it a 12-team provincial. Correct. Yeah. A little hit and roll out there by Brennan Jones, which will now doesn't leave a whole bunch for Clyder to do, but I'm sure they'll try to put it in the spot that hasn't been played yet and hope there's a new learning ice experience there. Even though you, you do get to have a little warm up practice before the game uh, I know the skips always do appreciate having a, a wide open draw in the first end to just to get a feel for the game and the, the weight of the ice uh, as the game gets started yeah, exactly so there are those two yellow rocks at the back outside of the rings but I think they're inconsequential because it doesn't look like uh, anything jamming on those two would be in the rings anyways. I would have to agree with you there, Brian. Yep. So Rylan Kleider throwing his first shot here and number one. Just looking to hit the house. Trevor Johnson is working this one really hard and uh, like they will just get it into the house. Kelly Knapp uh, with Hammer this end as they did qualify through the A event, which gave them the, the Hammer in the first end. We'll be throwing his first shot here, and I'm sure it's a, a hit and roll out will be the call. See if we're out in the 12 foot here, if this in turn will curl as hard as we've seen that one on the out turn 12 foot. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, on it right out of his hand, so it does look like it is curling. Yeah, that did come up quite a bit for that weight. So with that weight, I, I think Kelly was probably just trying to rip that, that rock off. Uh, he did have the option of, of doing what he did, which was hit and roll in and make Ryland hit on this. But I think Kelly really was just trying to rip that one. Yeah, we'll have to watch those those 12 foot to see if that continues to curl up. It could be a bit dished up in the 12 foot there, which can cause that to happen. Sometimes as the pebble builds up over over days that can happen too, right? You get a little bit more pebble up on the top wall. Yeah, exactly. Yep. 
Snyder looking to hit and stick and maybe roll it to a little different spot. So that one just came up really nicely. You can see that Ryland just threw kind of a working control weight, probably about a 10 second hit there. And that just did actually was was a pretty nice uh, curl on that. Nothing nothing crazy. It was also a little bit further inside where Kelly threw though. So it may be, as you said, Dean, that the, the pebble build up on kind of on that 12 foot line is, is making them curl a little more, maybe a little bit dished. So Kelly will again throw some heavy weight here and looking to roll out and retain yep. hammer into the second yep, end. Yep, yep, yep. Trent is on this one out of his hand. And a great shot. So after round number one, we had a pretty wide open end. Uh, Kelly Knapp with a peel out and we will blank the end and uh, retain hammer going into the second. Regina Plumbing and Heating is here to serve our residential, commercial, and industrial customers in the safest way possible. By wearing respirators, gloves, and other PPE, we're keeping our staff and customers safe while ensuring everyone has heat, hot water, and an operational plumbing system. For more information, see us online at reginaplumbing.net. Stay safe. Trust. Trust your family, the foundation of your operation. Trust. Trust your neighbors, always there to lend a hand. Trust. Trust your wisdom, passed on from generation to generation. Trust. Trust your intuition. It's usually right. Trust. Trust your dreams, especially the big ones. At MMP, we believe trust is earned. We're here for you and your growing business. Visit us at mnp.ca. All right, uh, welcome back here to the Swift Current Curling Club in the home of the Saskatchewan Tour Players Championship. And we're now into end number two, uh, tied, or tied at zero, and with a blank end in the first. And Kelly Knapp's retaining hammer here, and uh, looks like a few rocks in play, Brian, this end. Yeah, it was interesting. Trent Knapp, the lead for Kelly Knapp's team, threw an intern draw around that center guard. And as you can see, it came all the way out the other side, almost edge to edge open. So that is definitely more curl than what we've seen all weekend in this event. So that that's good. It's going to be a lot of fun with, with that much curl. And that would explain why it might be slightly heavier, too. Exactly. Yeah. Looked like a freeze that was just a bit heavy. It came down and slid right by. So obviously, Josh hasn't figured that if it is heavy, <laughs> it's still uh, sliding pretty good. The Trent Knapp now will just attempt to throw one right on top of that. Uh, Mine's good. Top just of the Yeah, I think Trent just took a few feet of weight off that one, and that's why it curled more. 
not a terrible result, but uh, he would, would like to have wrapped another one around that red guard. We'll meet the teams. We got up on the board there. Uh, playing lead slash second is uh, the super spare Josh Botcher. Who the boys have uh, played against a lot in juniors, and Josh hasn't played a lot in the last while, but uh, I know he was pretty excited to join the, the team for this weekend. Uh, Trevor Johnson, who normally plays the second position, is playing second slash, slash third and uh, getting lots of rocks in. And then, of course, Rowan continues to throw the last two. Josh trying the exact same freeze again, and once again, a little bit heavy. Which will, uh, could cause a bit of trouble here if uh, Kelly can come in and get that little roll in behind. And for the Kelly Knapp team, the lineup is their regular lineup, which is Trent Knapp. Kelly's brother is playing lead. Mike Armstrong plays second. Brennan Jones is the new player on this team this year. He's playing third. And Kelly Knapp is the skip. And they're out of the Highland. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. Looking like a really good shot and roll. So looking now that uh, Clyder will have to do some runbacks, and they've uh, they've had a few of these over the weekend. So I think Trevor's starting to think this is his normal shot that he throws every end. Lots of practice for it, for sure. Yep. 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 Hard. Okay, whoa. Whoa. Hand, they were cleaning it, and it's like it's going to be you know, the wrong half of the rock. And that'll open up the door again here for Kelly Knapp's team. Now, Kelly would have the option of throwing another outturn around that yellow corner guard, and I think that's maybe what he's looking at now. But he's going to just play a guard and uh, try to make the Clyder team waste a couple of shots getting getting the front open and getting a shot at that cluster of rocks in the forefoot, which is actually a pretty easy double if it's open. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Brian. I think uh, that, that option for a guard early in the end here is probably right because of that double being too easy, even if you do get another one in behind. But you get it in behind and you're still probably getting your two, so. Uh, yeah. Mike Armstrong. Right here. Guard up the I'm good. The Trent's rock that are in the forefoot. Trent's rock. Line looks really good. Just where it stops, where it stops. Nice shot. Nice shot. Again, just about an overthrow, but it does line up the potential run back double. And if we were at a slam event, Brian, this is pretty, a pretty relative easy triple. Yeah, for sure. If he's he, able to get the angle right, that yet second yellow guard may come back into those two in the forefoot. Yep. Trevor Johnson with yep. his second shot here. Hard. That's something on the side. Pretty good result. Yeah. Leaving that center guard without hammer is a really good shot and knowing that you have that again opportunity to raise that one back after Kelly sinks another one back. Right. Trevor actually got a little bit unlucky on that. That very easily could have run both of those yellows out of the rings, but the one stayed right there and the other one just squirted to the edge of the 12 foot. Brennan Jones now with his first shot, attempting to come around. This one is looking like it's running a little straighter, which usually means heavier. Now will this one stop in the house? If 
that was two Brian we've seen there with one of Josh's and one of uh, Brennan's now that came around and right through the house and maybe it did get a little bit slicker. Yeah, I think my earlier prediction of that the ice was a little heavier today may be off because th those rocks are running really well right now. I didn't get a time on that one, but uh, when that hit the front of the house, I didn't think it was going all the way through. So, Clyder's going to be aggressive here without hammer, and they do have the, the center guard, so if Trevor can wrap one around here, I think we force Nap into having to start doing a bit of peeling on the guard. Again, no broom on it, so it must mean there's a bit of weight here. That's a lot of room by the guard, too. Trevor Johnson and Josh Botcher both giving it a good sweep. A pretty good shot, but I think Brian with that, that long guard, that's still a pretty reasonable halfway nose hit. with his last rock here in number two. And the out. Two rocks remaining for Clyder. There's, they're looking at three yellow stones, and yellow does have hammer. It'll just finish up at the end. Yeah. So with that, now it looks like they're going to uh, try to hit and roll versus the come around, because that come around could lead to a potential four ender, so this is a big shot here to try to roll it under. Ryland Fighter with out turn to hit and roll. First shot. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. The line is good. Yep. They're off it, they're on it. Will this one curl up enough? as though it does and rolls right nicely under both the two yellow guards as well as so now uh, that'll be nothing but uh, an opportunity for Kelly will probably have to run the yellow straight back I think I've lost my partner Brian continue to talk to myself because I'm really good at that. Good things can happen here if they uh, hit it right on the nose. Uh, they will get rid of the red, probably a little bit on the center line side. Would probably be the best result. Um, and keep three yellows in the house by doing that. And, but really the goal here is to open it up and uh, give them an opportunity with their last shot. It was a very nice roll by Clyder to Kind of bail them out of the end, which he has done a lot this weekend. Yep, yep, yep. Kelly Knapp with the in turn yep. running back. Brother Trent is on it right away. Now they're off it. It must be very yeah. close. Whoa. Yeah. Hard. Hard. Very, very, very close. Yeah, fantastic shot. 
Oh, some great shot making here by the skips to, here in the early part of the game. So we're looks like we're going to be in for a doozer. Around is eyeing up perhaps. I'm not sure it's there, but I think he is lining up the triple. You have to hit that one very thin, but it potentially is there. And I, I guess uh, the hit and roll would also be another option. And roll under the center guards, but he's got to make it perfect or they are getting two anyway. So maybe the, the double attempt might be the better option right now. By the way, Josh is sitting there. He's either tired or he is convinced that that is the shot. Yeah, I wouldn't be expecting any curl, though. That looks like, this one looks like yours. And you know what? I, I think it is, too, because the, the odds of rolling for shot rock is slim, so that means it's just a free draw to the T-line for two anyways. So this might be the way to ensure you don't give up three. You can make this double. Yeah. Brian's having a little technical difficulty, so we'll uh, hopefully have him back here in a bit. And Rowan Fighter with the intern double attempt. And he's going to hit a little too thick, and that's going to make leave the door wide open for a hit the house for three for Kelly Knapp. So after a couple of really nice shots there, that, uh, that three ball snuck up real fast. Uh, again, uh, with Kelly Knapp making a good run back. And uh, now is an easy shot here for three. Kelly Knapp with the out turn draw. We have seen a few, but we're running pretty fast here, so we'll see how we're going to get a time on this one. Boys were timing it interval, it looked like, and they jumped it with his hand, and now Trent is cleaning it, and Mike is cleaning it. Now they're going to be, looks really close. Well, there you go, that's a three pointer for the Kelly Knapp team, and they will take a three to nothing lead after two ends of play into the third end. Hi, I'm Ben Hebert, four-time Canadian champion. I'm here today at Carpet Superstore. Flooring Superstore. Edit this. We had a name change. <laughs> Flooring Superstore. Bright and elegant tile. Southern Saskatchewan's largest in-stock selection of vinyl plank flooring. Warm and comfortable area rugs. Don't take it from me. Come down, use the Benny Heath discount code. See Trent and the boys. They're the professionals at Flooring Superstore. <laughs>
right, welcome back here to the, the Swift Current Curling Club and the Players Championship. And we had the, the NAP team uh, come up with a big three-ender here in the second end to take control of this game. And, uh, but as we know with the five rock rule, uh, those three-enders can pop up really fast with a couple of really nice shots here and there. You can see the, the first shot of Josh's, but it's, I'm assuming it was either hogged or it went uh, through the house. I didn't see that happen. It, went, it was hogged, yeah. And I, I'm back, Dean, Brian McCusker. I'm joining you for the, this uh, telecast. I uh, had some technical issues. My, uh, my phone actually ran out of power. So uh, I have got it plugged in now, and uh, I'm good to go. I did have to unplug the Christmas tree in the Swift Current Curling Club lounge to get my phone plugged in. So it's quite a bit less festive here than it was before. But you know what? I think it's time to take the Christmas tree down anyways. What, what do you think, Dean? Yeah, I think uh, it was Ukrainian Christmas was yesterday or the day before, I believe. So I think, yeah, it's fine. Higher. A couple of updates from the... Uh, other provincial playdowns going on, and here in Saskatchewan, the Scotties is going on, and uh, we have Chelsea Carey that's through to the final this afternoon at three, and we'll have uh, Penny Barker taking on Amber Holland in the, the semifinal here this morning at uh, 10 o'clock. So, should be exciting, and a, and a little add to that is uh, Pearl Sask has added uh, a little U18 championship game that we played at the same time as the as the Barker Holland game, and that would be uh, Matthew Druitz and Taylor, Savannah Taylor, who were the two U18 champions going to uh, nationals, and they're going to have a little game on the, on the Scotty's ice. What a thrill for them. That's a great idea. Yeah, Pat has been quite. In, Pat Simmons has been quite instrumental in uh, setting up a lot of these sort of events during or before uh, some of the bigger events for these young kids, uh, just to get that experience to see what goes on. And uh, as you know, Brian, you've been to a lot of these banquets in the past as well. And once you get there, you kind of get a, a bit of a taste in that that you really want to get back there again. So much. Fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. After one corner guard, uh, Josh has now made a really nice shot to come around and bury that one. A bunch of yellows in the front, but I'm sure you're going to see Kelly step up and decide it's time to remove that corner guard. Yeah, it's a nice recovery for Josh after hogging his first one through a really good corner guard and then a very nice come around. From Mike Armstrong. Uh, one of the better mixed doubles players in the province as well. He plays with Ashley Quick, and uh, you know that his game has improved a lot when you play that mixed doubles game because it is a it is a shot maker's game for sure. Yeah, you know, Dean, I wasn't that familiar with Mike until he joined the team last year, and I, I coached him for the first time. But he is just an amazing player. He has got all of the shots in his game. He's a great hitter draws really well and again I think that that's pretty typical of a mixed doubles player that they're they're able to play all kinds of shots and uh, Mike is just a he's a really good rock thrower I'm very impressed with him and you know just to add to that Brian with the what I've even seen all the mixed doubles with the younger players even uh, those that play the mixed doubles they, they just get so much better because they're they're not playing the exact same shot all the time and they're figuring angles and they're, they've got to throw those mixed weights and it's, it's just so much fun to throw those shots and you don't always get those chances in the four person game, uh, especially if you're maybe not playing, if you're playing a front, front end position. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Dean. And I think the other thing is you're, you're a little bit exposed when you're playing mixed doubles because you're, you're almost all alone out there with the shot. And, so if you don't make a shot, you've really got nobody to, to point the finger at but, but yourself. 
Um, if there's a sweeping mistake, it's usually you that made the sweeping mistake. And that's one of the things I really like about watching mixed doubles. Absolutely. And that's probably why the, the team dynamics is uh, a lot different when you have just the two players versus the four as well because of that. Yeah. So Trevor Johnson came up a bit late on his attempt to draw around that, I guess you could say, top 12 corner guard. So that's going to leave an opening here for for the NAP team to hit and roll and sit four. Brennan Jones with the attempted hit and stick. Again, that 12 foot line, Brian, looks like it's throwing again pretty hard. He does get just enough of it. Yeah, I'm wondering if Brennan was maybe a little bit soft on the weight on that one. It looked to me when it got down there that it, it didn't have the kind of weight that they had asked for. And I think that's probably why it did over curl there. Two staggered ones in the top 12 there. Yep, yep, really this one's going to come up light as well. Team Clay are just having a bit of trouble with their weight here this morning. I'd like to just catch this one here. Stick this four in the ring. Or maybe they were playing the freeze on that. Brian, did I miss that? No, I think they were coming around, but uh, it actually is not a bad result. This one's a little behind it, though. For sure. So I think just like this. With a three-point lead, you're gonna see the NAP team just wanting to remove that one. They lose their scissor, not the end of the world. And perhaps even just off a of nose, Brian, because you those staggered ones probably are, like you mentioned, are just guards anyways for fighter to get around. So you might want to just nose it and keep your your shooter right there or maybe just roll to the center line a bit yeah i think if, if you could jiggle things around you know the other option is to ignore that rock and just throw another one into the forefoot and you know i think with kelly laying three right now and Clyder having only three rocks to come it may be tempting to to just ignore that rock but i, I think that it looks like they want to hit it I, I agree with you, that would be, if they can beat Clyder in there with, with the top four foot around, that would be put in a really good shape. So it looks like they've elected to hit this one. And never hurts to hit an opposition rock when you have a three point lead. So Brennan Jones with his last shot here in number three. Unlock those in the back beautifully too. Yeah, I don't think he could have done any better than that. Uh, that's a really good shot by Brennan because he did take away that stagger. Now, if Ryland is able to get one behind that yellow rock on the center line, it would, it would be a, a short run in for the NAP team. Well, 
I think Clayter's either looking at a corner freeze on the yellow rock that's just above the tee line in the eight foot, or they've got the option for a, an in off double with the one on the 12 foot, which Rowan just met just the position of boom to. Not a lot of really good options, but uh, those are probably the two. Do you see anything else, Brian? No, I think you're right. I think that's probably his best option. Siri kicked me when I asked her that question. She said she doesn't have an answer for that. Oh, if only we could ask Siri strategy questions about curling all the time. <laughs> hey, Siri, what would you do? I guess Siri's not able to help either. Skinny double, Brian, is that what they've decided on here? I think so. It, it's a, a fairly steep double. He would have to hit this pretty thin, but if he can do it and stick that rock right there, again, there's an overlap over on that side, and the nap team would not be able to get at that rock. Trevor Johnson with his intern. They haven't touched the boom on it yet. Close, but they got to hit it thin. Fantastic wow. shot. That is a great shot. Trevor with a good bounce back there after a couple tough ones and uh, puts Clayter in a really good position now to potentially score his two and get back in this game. And that has to be careful too because there is another red biter that they don't want to bring into play either. Well, exactly, and the way that red biter is set up, that, that would probably be a, a run-in double as well. So I think Knapp is going to have to make a play on that rock, and it looks like that's what he's going to do. And he's going to have to be careful on this one, too, because if he slices it too thin, there may be a jam as well on his rock on the center line in the front eight foot. For sure, yeah, it's not a, not a gimme shot for sure if he comes up. He hits it too thin or too thick, right? There's an option for that to happen. Exactly. So I guess just hit it in the right spot and no, no problem there. Yeah, just, just trying to run it through that hole between the two yellows. Kelly Knapp with his first shot here in number two. He's looking to hit a half rock, steal it through the hole. Cleaning it right down, it be really close. What a beautiful shot. So now Kleider has to decide what is his best option, and it's like they're discussing the hit on the one in the center line or drawing around it. If you draw around it, Brian, that does bring in the potential three ball if a run back isn't made. But it does also give a run back steal opportunity after that too. So. Yeah. And it looks like he's decided to play the head, and I actually like the shot. I think this is the right call. This is the, the best way to consolidate your two and, and get back to a 3-2 game, because if he hits this right on the nose, it's a very difficult double for Kelly now. I would agree with you, and, and even that coming around that guard to the top four doesn't really make a very difficult shot for Kelly. His run back is a two foot, three foot run back, and that's going to be made 95 times out of 100. Exactly. So Rylan Kleider with this, the intern hit on the nose, I believe, is what he's trying to do. Fairly close out of the hand. Yep. Yep. Mark. 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 To work it, to hold the line. Mark. 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 And pretty good shot. Yeah, that's a very good shot. He even got just a little bit of a roll to the right, which makes the double, I think, even more difficult for Kelly. He's looking at playing a slash double. 
It's pretty thin, probably about a quarter to a third of a rock. Yeah. But I do think that's the only way he could make that because it's going to be a, that the redirect would be really thin, wouldn't it, to try to get it back? It would be, yeah. And of course, if he does make this, he will lose his shooter, which should then give a opportunity for fighter to blank the end. If uh, the double is not made, then it probably or you will see a drop for a potential two. These slashes are always thinner than you think, Brian, aren't they? Exactly. And uh, the difficult part of it is when you're hitting at this thin, you want to make sure that you're not wide and you, you don't want to flash it and give up three right back. And I think psychologically, it's hard to make these shots because you're you're so afraid of, of uh, just airballing it. So true. Yeah. Just about. Yep. And that's the the pro miss, as you mentioned. You don't want to be flashing that one, so that was the way yeah. to do it. So assuming Ryland makes this draw and gets two, we will have a, a couple of crooked numbers up in the first three ends, and both of them created by really big shots. Kelly Knapp's double run back in the second end that, that set up the three, and then Trevor Johnson's thin double in this end, which really turned the end around. It sure did, yeah. That was the TSN turning points of those ends, if you will. So Rylan Kleider with the draw to the eight foot to score his deuce and throwing it now with Trevor sweeping it. Like it must be close. Trevor's just cleaning it right now. Now he's off it. This maybe is going to be heavy if the way Trevor's standing. I'm not sure what happened to that one, but it looked like it was a lot heavier than that when it came down. Yeah, you, you never want to see your sweeper backing off the rock. Nope. I'm not sure who coaches that team, but he better <laughs> talk to that team. <laughs> that was a pick for sure. <laughs> now that they're sweeping it up. Anyways, after... Three ends of play, Kleider takes his two, so now Knapp will take a three to two lead into the fourth end of play. Hi, I'm Kurt, and at Flamin, we offer a variety of services to keep your trailer road safe and road ready. Whether it's trailer maintenance, an inspection, a repair, warranty or upgrades, you can trust our accredited locations to give you the service you need. So whatever your trailer needs are, we've got you covered. Contact your local Flamin dealer to see how we can help you today. Every trailblazer has naysayers. Every innovator, cynics. Every leader, skeptics. Anyone with a vision for their future has faced doubters in their past. So this is our message to the doubters. You can't stop this farmer. You can't stop invention, you can't stop progress, you can't stop science, you can't stop this farmer. You can't stop family, you can't stop heart, you can't stop harvest, you can't stop this farmer. You can't stop the desire to make your mark, make your fortune, and make anyone who has ever doubted eat their words. You can't stop this farmer. So let's silence the doubters. Let's outgrow, let's outyield, let's outwork, let's outsmart. Let's look to the future and bust through. With SASTEL sponsorships, we get to be a part of your community. SASTEL cares, always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Mine's perfect. All right, 
welcome back here at Swift Current uh, and our uh, match between Kelly Knapp and Ryland Fighter. It's been just a, a brilliant pin in off by Trevor to, uh, to turn the end around and uh, get the fighters into a position to score their two. And uh, Knapp will take the lead here into the fourth end of play. Brian, you got some updates from the other games today? I do. So we've got three other games on the go in the quarterfinals here at the SCT Tour Championship. So uh, Jason Jacobson is ahead of Cody Hartung, three to one. They are playing the fourth end. Uh, I'd have to say that's a little bit of an upset just because Hartung has, has been absolutely rolling this weekend and just pretty much crushing everyone he plays. Yep. But Jacobson with a three one lead there. Uh, We've got Ryan Dice with a 4-2 lead over, or sorry, a 5-3 lead over Max Kirkpatrick. And Sean Meacham with a 4-0 lead over Ben Gamble. They are just finishing up the third end. And Ben Gamble's team playing with three this morning. Ben had a, a nasty slip and fall yesterday and uh, is un unable to, uh, to play. Oh my, that was on the, on the ice or outside on the ice? On the ice, he actually had just thrown a rock and was just getting up, and he, he slipped and fell backwards and uh, hurt his, his hip and leg. And I think he's, he's okay, but he didn't feel he was able to play this morning. Oh, wow. We wish him well. Yep. Yes, line. Line's really good. Come on. All right, back to the game here, and uh, Josh Botcher with a pair of, as they say, a couple of really good shots to set up this end. And but uh, Trent Knapp has been equal to the task with two beautiful shots as well. So Dean, I know uh, you have a lot of Team Clyder fans that, that tune in and you do a great job of uh, broadcasting a lot of the games uh, to your fans and sponsors. Tell me a little bit ab about uh, the Ryland Clyder team this year. I, I know this weekend they've, uh, they're have they missing a couple players and they've got a, a substitute in, but they've kind of gone all year um, adjusting to new players, right? Because Ryland missed a, a lot of the skills due to uh, his football commitments. Tell me a little bit more about their season. Yeah, it's been a bit of a, a mixed bag for them as far as uh, players going together. And uh, they did form this team in the spring with, with Steve Laycock um, as their alternate. And uh, he was going to be the guy that would be playing whenever some of the other players couldn't play and more specifically in the, the first early part of the season that would be with Ryland and his football with the Regina Rams um, but also the other boys are very busy too with, uh, with their things so uh, Josh, Josh with his uh, finishing up his engineering and uh, Matthew and Bet Med all pretty busy schedules and uh, so Steve was, was very gracious to, to help out and he did last year as well and it's been really good for the boys to have Steve um, on board and uh, learn his perspective of the game too. So it's been it's been good. Uh, the unfortunate thing is they haven't played a lot of games together um, as a team this year. But you know what, this Brian, three of the boys have played together since they're in kindergarten. So uh, they have got a lot of experience. So it's not like they need a lot of games together, but it's definitely fun when they can all get together. Yeah, I know you've coached this team for a long time, Dean, and it, I honestly can't think of a team where the players have been together as long as this team right through juniors. And I think Trevor was the kind of the newcomer, and he's been on the team, what, something like eight or nine years, right? Yeah, I think Trevor's, yeah, nine, I think now, and the other the other boys, I believe it's 14 that I've been with them. Yeah, and, uh, that's... And, yeah, that's what you're right. It's, uh, it's going to be a sad day when... It's not a matter of if it doesn't it can't last forever but it will be a sad day when uh when they do move on to other things and but you never know gushu and uh and his team has been especially his third there they've been together for a lot of years too and holman too so yeah well, I know my, my wife Joan's team, the, the Sandra Schmerler team, that was one of the things I think that made them so good is that they they played together for a long time. Um, they never had thoughts of making changes on that team. And I think that uh, too many curling teams do make changes uh, too quickly. I would agree with you. It's, uh, 
and especially in today's world, everybody wants that instant success. And when it comes early, obviously, it makes it a lot easier to understand how to stick together. But I think uh, teams that are willing to stick it out and, and do all the right things um, to make their team better, I think, can really, uh, and really, and having the right, not just the team, but all your other support staff around you to, to make sure you can, can accomplish that. Yeah, I agree. The other thing, Dean, about, about coaching this team for so long, and I, I'm sure, I think I know the answer to this already, but I'm sure that it's very different coaching this team now than it was when they were back in juniors and especially uh, in U18s in the sense that there's probably less input on strategy uh, from you than there used to be because and I, I know this is what I find in coaching the Kelly Knapp team. They know more about strategy than I do. So I, I've told the guys a couple of times this year, it, it's almost boring coaching you because after the game, I don't have any calls to talk about where I think you did the wrong thing. And I'm sure that you found that as, as these guys have progressed too, that there, there's a lot less input on strategy than there used to be. Absolutely, yeah. There's they've learned so much over the years that uh, I always like to use the analogy that I've taught them everything I know or everything they know but not everything I know <laughs> so, so I do have a few tricks up the sleeve that I use every once in a while that uh, that they'll they're still young but you're absolutely right Brian and I, I coach my younger daughter's team as well and and uh, with this on ice coaching uh, you're probably familiar with how they're doing that now to me that's just a godsend in coaching for curling and to be able to impact a game and teach on the spot versus after the fact and having those glazed eyes about what could have or should have been done and uh, so it's 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 very rewarding as you know as a coach to be able to to provide that guidance and to have it being done right away and i'll tell you with the boys we had john madden who's probably our the, the most important piece of our whole puzzle and he would end up tracking every shot of every game and we can go back and evaluate those games and be able to pick out spots where we needed to do something different and we learned the, the hard way not the hard way of always losing the games but <clears throat> the hard way of having to spend that time after the games to figure it out so but definitely more rewarding now to sit behind my desk and be able to to uh, call the game this way So back to the game here, we got Kelly uh, Knapp looking at uh, pretty good rocks in position here. And really nice shot there to split the red one out and keep his shooter. So. Yeah, that was a good shot by Mike. That really rearranges the house more to the, the Knapp team's advantage. Um, that rock that Mike just hit, the one that was in the front eight foot, was definitely a danger rock for them. Yeah, so now Kleider has to decide, is there that double, or do you kind of hit it on the nose? So this is an end, the, the fourth end in a, an eight end game is one where Kelly Knapp probably wants to play uh, for what I would call a soft deuce. He, he doesn't really need to go hard for a big end here, but he really wants to make sure that he scores. And if he can get a deuce, that, that's a bonus. For sure, that, that's exactly right. And now, fighter looking to raise this straight back, or is he trying to double here, Brian? I you know, I think he was actually very close to making a triple there. Just over curled a little bit. Okay. And it, it turned out a little bit unfortunately for the Clyder team because it kicked that yellow rock right behind the corner guard. The good news is they're lane two and there's no access to a double for the nap team. So it looks like they're gonna play, just try to hit and flop in front of that red. Yeah, and I think that's the, to be the right call, and even a nose isn't the end of the world for him right now. For sure. You know, as I said, this is an end where the, the NAP team really needs to score. If they can get a deuce, great, but even a score of one is, is a, a very good result here. 
And you had mentioned some of the changes in coaching. One of the things that's really changed a lot in curling over the last few years is the use of metrics on, on scoreboard management. And the, the importance of not giving up steals. I, I know when we used to play Dean, it was always about getting a multiple score when you had Hammer. And you can see now the, the top teams, both in, in women's and men's, play very much uh, to protect the, the, the hammer and make sure you score at least a single point. Yeah, it's, it's almost like the turnover in football, right? If you win the turnover battle, <laughs> yeah. you should be to win the game. Still looking to get close to nose on this one. It does roll out a little bit. The player does have the option to freeze on that yellow one, but obviously with all those yellows in still in the house and earlier in the, the end still, the hit and roll may be the best option still. I'd say half, half is good. Fit, fit, fit is okay. Or perhaps the nose is at the end of the world. Good, good peel, probably need six. Maybe he's thinking triple again, Brian? I think he is, yeah. about just a half a rock triple maybe maybe a little thicker trevor johnson here with his last shot in end number four attempting the half a rock double or triple and it's going to be too thick but luckily didn't roll in front to line up a double so kind of a a good plan b there yeah. Just to hear. I would still say advantage Clyder in this end. They, they've got a really good opportunity to get a force or possibly a steal. But if Brennan Jones can make this hit and roll in front of the red, it's looking a lot better for the NAP team. Yeah, that's definitely the call there. And even rolling under the corner is not at the end of the world either. Control. Right. Yes. one right out of his hand. Oh, they're off it. So I think they're going to plan B to get around the corner, which is a really good shot too. However, red does still maintain shot. Yeah, they kind of got caught in kind of got caught in between there. A, a, a little bit bigger roll would have been good or a little bit less of a roll would have been good. It rolled kind of into a, a spot where Ryland can get a corner freeze on that and uh, or you know possibly even play a double although I think the double may jam I think it will too and I, I believe the I like the corner freeze and if you end up stopping as long as you don't over curl if you end up stopping top 12 that wouldn't be the end of the world either but if you do corner freeze and they hit it on the nose it could get rid of a lot of red as well Ryland's first shot coming, is that correct? Yeah. So that would be... That corner freeze is so delicate because if you ever tap it and roll open, that's going to be an easy double for, for the sit four as well. Correct. Do you ever guard the red? Yeah, you could. It's it's a, a little bit of a scary call because if you don't make it perfectly, you're looking at giving up four. But I don't mind that call either. Just the question would be, you, you pretty much have to guard two shots, don't you? Because you're guarding the, the yellow run back into red and you're also you're guarding right. the hack weight come around tap as well. Yeah, and the way the rocks are moving, it's... Uh, one thing, I think it makes it a little bit harder to make a perfect guard, but also your guard has to be very tight to protect against a half weight chase by Matt. Yeah. And he can hit right now that yellow one pretty much anywhere 
on the center line side and it's going into the red, right? It is, yeah. It's interesting uh, you mentioned, Dean, that you were asking if this is Ryland's first rock. Uh, I was watching the Alberta men's semifinal last night. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Ted Appleman uh, was playing against Jeremy Hardy and Appleman's third threw three rocks in one end. Oh, no. He threw his own two, own two and then accidentally threw the first one of Appleman's. I, I'd have to say I've never seen that in a competitive uh, uh, high-level curling game. So what happens in that situation? Nobody noticed it until um, after the, the next rock had been thrown. And apparently the rule is that the, the third rock that, that Appleman's third threw should have been removed from play. But because the next rock was then thrown, there was nothing you could do about it. It was too late and they didn't catch it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that's when you want to keep track of if that ever happens. You want to, <laughs> not after the fact. <laughs> you see often though, the, the third is down holding the broom when they have one more shot left. I, I have seen that before, yeah. But usually the front end is smart enough to catch that for them. All right, I'm not sure what they decided here, Brian, if it's a freeze. I'm, I'm thinking he's playing a freeze on that yellow. Just based on where the broom is. tuck that second yellow under that corner a little further so that is a really good position here right now Kelly will attempt to I think probably hit and roll a little bit in front of that other red would be ideal yeah, I think you, you don't want to nose this for sure because that, that really is going to set up a pocket for Ryland to come into. So you want to make sure you roll to the broom side, probably to center line or even a little bit more. In fact, I would say the miss here is to roll right out. I'd rather roll right out than hit this on the nose. Mm -hmm. So Kelly Knapp with his intern hit and roll in front of the red here. Another Trent on it out of his hand. Really curling, is he gonna be able to hold it? They might roll under the other way, Brennan. Which is a pretty good Yeah, that's, that's absolutely a great sweet call by Brennan Jones to, to get them off that rock at the end and make sure you don't hit it on the nose. It doesn't leave a triple here. Yeah, no it definitely triple. might. No triple to sit to potentially, but there is that guard that looks like it could be in the way. I think the shot still, Brian, is to come down and give it a little tap. Get a corner yeah, throw yeah, maybe, yeah. and angle there. Yeah, I think the shot is the triple. I, I think you can see both of that. And yeah, I, I actually, I, I do. He's, he would have to throw it hard, but I think that that back yellow is going to squirt back enough to get it out of the, the eight foot circle. And what about the top yellow? Does that go on to the red one that's in the back glow? It might. I think it might go over top of it, but it's, it's hard to tell the angle. Probably has to get what he can see. Or you yeah. Can get to know, but if you get to know, you can double. Yeah. Things, if you ever come down with back 
eight foot weight get to the nose, you're going to give up maximum two probably. Yeah. Because you will be second. And you could even be shot rock perhaps if you get the inside. If you can keep the rock to the center line side as well. I'm guessing the young guys will throw a hit at it, but I'm thinking your odds are better with the uh, nice little corner three tap. Yeah, I don't mind that call either. And I think for Ryland, he, even giving up two here is, is almost a win because it keeps him in the game, just three down or four ends to go. This end was not going well. Um, you know, I, I think a two is almost a win. I would agree with you, yeah. And I don't know, Brian, if that back yellow will go out. I no, I, I, I think you might be right. I, I, I can't tell if they're exactly frozen right on. Yeah. But uh, again, even even the double and getting rid of, of, of those two yellows is not bad. Although, I guess that, that would still give Kelly a, a hit on the back one or a double for three. But... And it looks like he's, he's going to play the freeze. Yeah. I think I think that's your your high risk, but it's a high return shot too. And, uh, he just threw this draw weight, so he should have a good handle of what weight he needs here. Yeah. Fighter with his intern corner freeze to stay in the game, if you will. Yep, 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 yep. Cover was cool, and he's on it a bit. Looking fairly good if they can hold the line. See a pretty nice shot. That is, that's a very good shot. I think you're going to see Kelly draw for his deuce here. Let's see. I guess we could potentially chip that one out for four, eh, Brian, with the back line weight? Well, three for sure. I'm not sure if that one that's on the far left would, would count, but it's a little bit risky. Uh, so, you know, again, this is a, a bit of a strategy philosophy question. Are you better taking your sure two? and going three up with four ends to go, or do you play the shot to, to try to get that extra point or possibly even two extra points? And the way, I, the way I look at this, Brian, is I would say I would take my two because potentially here, if you do throw it heavy, I guess he's still gonna get his one. If it goes by the red, he's not gonna lose shot. So the risk here is maybe only getting one instead of two. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's a big difference between three up and two up with four ends to go. I, I think, uh, again, the, the stats would show that uh, there, there's a significantly higher winning percentage uh, if, if he's able to get two here. But it looks like he's, he's going to take a shot at it anyways. Yep. And I think he's looking to just, if he hits half a rock with back eight weight, he's going to count four. Yeah. I guess the other thing is, if, you know, if he's, he's a little bit light and still hits it on the, the right side, he could still get his two anyways. That's great. Right. So Kelly Knapp here with last shot at number four. Good, yeah. Looking yes. to tap the yellow or the red rock out and count as possibly oh, two or four. Oh, oh, Mike, Mike. Pretty close. Going to curl up enough. Wow, that's a great shot. It's a really good shot. And I think it is for four. Looks like it. And again, kudos to Brennan Jones for a really good sweep. Yeah. Those are not easy to call the sweep on, and he did a great job with uh, getting 
the inside sweeper on early and then carving it a little bit at the end. Absolutely, that was a fantastic team shot and Kelly Knapp scores a big four ball to take a 7-2 to two lead into the fifth end of play. Hi, I'm Ben Hebert, four-time Canadian champion. I'm here today at Carpet Superstore. Superstore. We edit this. We had a name change. Flooring Superstore. Bright and elegant tile. Southern Saskatchewan's largest in-stock selection of vinyl plank flooring. Warm and comfortable area rugs. Don't take it from me. Come down, use the Benny Heath discount code. See Trent and the boys. They're the professionals at Flooring Superstore. <laughs> Pair up super fast internet and incredible TV for applause worthy savings. Swift Current is affordable and safe, offering a high quality of life with a robust business environment diverse economy and thriving arts, culture and recreation scene. We want it to be that way for generations to come. Good financial planning is a big part of that. The city is responsible for providing services that have a big impact on everyday life. Electricity and clean water, curbside waste collection and disposal, transit, new roads, intersections and stoplights, road and sidewalk maintenance, street sweeping and snow plowing, police, fire and emergency response bylaw services, parks and trails, swimming lessons, summer kid camps and other recreation programs, playgrounds, splash pads, golf courses and arenas, our library, art gallery and museum, festivals and sporting events, and much more. City Services provides the foundation for Swift Current's safe, healthy and growing community and will help us achieve our vision of 25 by 25. Approximately 61% of your property taxes remain with the city. The rest is collected on behalf of our local school divisions. Other sources of revenue include utility rates, government grants and transfers, and revenue from our own sources. We plan our budget carefully to help make the decisions about where, when, and how your money is spent. To learn more about Swift Current's budget and services, visit swiftcurrent.ca. You're coaching as a young person, and uh, I think they got they got a bit of work, but they got some really good building blocks. Good. Anyways, we're back here at Swift it's Current, and uh, early, so it might we're going to be looking for lots to talk about. Brian, the, the, like the Nap team uh, right. takes a seven-two lead um, into this fifth end, and uh, a pretty well-played end. Uh, just Nap seemed to come up with some some really key shots to to make that end successful. Try and take this. Sorry. Give you a bit more of an update. We've got yeah, uh, out in BC right now. The the men's and ladies championships are going on, and uh, I believe the, the final this morning between uh, Kayla McMillan I, and Mary like Ann Arsenal. Nine o'clock uh, BC time. Sorry? Yeah, and then on the men's side is Jeff Richard, which. Um, we'll be playing against uh, Paul Sesky at 2 p.m. for the, the Tankard representative out of BC. And Brian, you would know this in Alberta. Um, your wife is coaching a team out there, I believe, that's, that's uh, going to be playing in the final. Yeah, she's coaching Casey Scheidegger's team. She, this is, I think, her third year coaching that team. And uh, they've had a really good week in, in Alberta Scotties. Uh, they came close to winning the round robin. Uh, but um, ended up in a three-way tie for first, and they got set back because of uh, having not the best last shot draw number. So they played the, the semifinal yesterday against Kelsey Rock and won that game. So they will play Laura Walker in the final today, and I think that game is at noon Saskatchewan time, and it is on Sportsnet. So I'll be looking forward to watching uh, that one. For sure, there's two teams that were at the trials here in Saskatoon, and I'm sure they're hoping to finish this season off with a win here. To and, and on the men's side, there's uh, 
Kevin Cooey seems to be walking away with that. Uh, hasn't had too many close games and is going to be playing in the final against, uh, I believe it's Ted Ackerman this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. So that should be a, a good match as well. Yeah, Cooey's team is... Tui's team has pretty much walked through the the uh, first portion of that event, but you never know what's going to happen in a final. And Appleman is uh, he's a very good player, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that's a close game. Yeah, it's funny how the, the team always does well. Right. Yeah, it was interesting in the Alberta women's Scotties. Uh, they played an eight-team round robin. And there were three pretty clear favorites, I think, Scheidegger, Walker, and Kelsey Rock. And uh, those three teams, um, they won all of their games against the other five teams. They went 15-0 and 0 against the other five teams. So not a single upset, really, amongst those top three teams. Um, and, you know, I watched quite a few of those games, and, and some of those young Alberta women's teams are very good, very promising teams, but just so much difference be between those young teams and the, the, the three kind of elite teams that you just didn't have any upsets. So true in, in this game, and I think, Brian, you'd, you'd uh, agree with that, is that you, you can teach the game all you want, but still have to experience those moments that allow you to keep the clean it, clean down it. and to clean make it. those shots when they're when they're yep. really needed, especially that the yep. eight, nine, and ten. You know, we stress those are those three ends that yep. most teams will win or lose the games. And yep. you yep. do see the yep. most yep. teams yep. yep. come up with those yep. eight, nine, and ten yep. shots that you need. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think one of the things that, that I notice a lot is when teams that maybe don't have the experience playing at those that that high level when they get on tv for the first time and they're wearing mics and they're seeing all the cameras it really creates a, a very different atmosphere and feeling and you know, lots of times you'll see the the less experienced teams just not react well to, to that pressure of being Clean. on television Clean. Nice, so and, and i i always go back to the my time playing with bruce Forty and and we would, this is when Eugene Ritzik and you guys too were in, were in the top of your game. And, uh, but I always remember Eugene and uh, for whatever reason, and I think it was because of the notoriety of the team, they got other teams to miss against them that these teams wouldn't really miss against other teams. So it's kind of, you always, you always seen that pressure as soon as some teams are playing a better team. They put a little more pressure on themselves, and then uh, they do get those misses versus playing relaxed, having some fun, and making shots. Absolutely. There, there definitely is an intimidation factor amongst those elite teams, and I, I know exactly what you're talking about with Eugene Ritzik's team. Uh, I always felt it, it was a little bit intimidating playing against Eugene. Um, and, you know, it's just an experience thing. When, once you get the wins under your belt, then you become that team. And, uh, you know, I, I really see that with Ryland's team playing on the, the men's circuit for the last few years. That They're just getting better and better from the experience of playing against oh, the, easy. the more experienced easy, teams. Easy, easy, easy. Absolutely. And, and even to any of the juniors that are watching out there, too, it's, uh, it does become a, you get to as many finals as you can, and you learn from each one. And there's many losses in the finals. But if you can get to enough of them, eventually that does click and you win that final. And then everything becomes a lot more manageable and easy um, in a lot of different ways. And hence these boys who have gone on to win. I remember the first one, Brian, first U18 Provincial they won in 2015. And it was like I had lost three Provincial Finals as a player. Um, Rowan had lost three Provincial Finals as a junior player, and we're in this final game, and I'm thinking, can this be another final loss? And all, all comes through, we make a great shot. We win our first provincial in 2015, which was like, oh man, at least we got one provincial in the Spider family, right? And then all of a sudden they go on to win six more after that. And yeah. uh, so it's kind of, it's almost like it just turns a curve and it just, and it also, encourages you to want to work more at it when you have success at something, right? And then when you work more at it, you get better at it. And 
things just start to, to come together. Yeah, absolutely. My wife always says you need to learn to lose before you can learn to win. And you, you have to learn from those losses. It, it, it's going to make you better. And, you know, I, I hate to see uh, teams get frustrated by losing a final. It, it just means that you're very close to, to being a champion. It is. And it's, it's probably when you look back at those finals, those are probably your, your best opportunities to learn because now you're, you know how close you are. And, and they, they, you don't know it at the time. Obviously, the feeling's not great. Um, but you do realize later on that, hey, this, that's what made us better and got us to here. I guess we're still broadcasting curling here too, Brian. We should maybe chat about the game a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a pretty open end. We've had a, a couple of pretty good clearing shots by the NAP team. But Clyder still does have that one corner guard. And if he can sink one around there, he's still got a shot at getting a deuce and staying in the game. That's one of the things this Clyder team is very good at, and that's uh, handling that adversity when, when things aren't good. There's sometimes there is frustration, but you, you learn over the, over the training time that you have lots of tools that can get you back in the game and make sure you're still having fun with it, even though being down five is never fun a lot of times. But you can see by the way Trevor is sweeping there that they're still giving it 110%. Yeah, there's, there's no quit, that's for sure. You know, that, that one looked really good coming over the hog line and getting past the guard, but it really didn't finish as well as I thought it would. Yeah. Especially with that high guard like that, it was uh, a lot to finish. But again, that, that may be a, a function of, as we noticed earlier, Dean, it, it seems a little bit dished at the edges. And we, we saw that outside in hit in that spot curling pretty hard. So I think the inside out, is, is not going as hard. And that would make sense, right? To do the extra a little bit. Yeah. Which makes this not an easy shot for Kelly Knapp. He's going to have to make sure he doesn't flare this one because I don't think it's going to curl very much. I would agree with you. With his his first or last rock, his last rock. This is, this is his last rock, yeah. Leading seven to two, just looking to remove the Clyder Stone to force them into a single here. Very close. Nice line and. Yeah, that was a very good throw by Kelly. He, he he didn't overthrow it. He made sure his weight was a uh, working weight. And as you could see, it still didn't curl very much, but he he made sure he, he did tip that in a little bit to the broom. And uh, that's that's a nice pick. He did roll out, so that'll give Rylan an opportunity to blank and retain hammer for the sixth end. Yeah, and Kelly's been spot on here today. He's been uh, making some really good shots. as has the entire NAP team. So Rowling Fighter with the interim heel, I believe. The half a rock rolls out, so they'll blank this fifth end and take the all-important hammer into the sixth. However, trailing seven to two. You silence the doubters. You get the best tools. You work with the right people. You look to the future and bust through. Regina Plumbing and Heating is here to serve our residential, commercial, and industrial customers in the safest way possible. By wearing respirators, gloves, and other PPE, we're keeping our staff and customers safe while ensuring everyone has heat, hot water, and an operational plumbing system. For more information, 
see us online at reginaplumbing.net. Stay safe. It's time to give your old phones a fresh start. When you donate your old phones at a SaskTel store, we put phones and phone cards into the hands of people in transition shelters fleeing domestic abuse and youth transitioning out of social services care. Be the reason behind someone's fresh start. Learn more at sastel.com slash fresh start. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, font spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, Brian McCusker and myself, Dean Kleider, here to bring you the broadcast of the Team Knapp versus Team Kleider in the first round of qualification here in Swift Current. And Team Knapp jumped up to a 7-2 to two lead, and uh, Kleider is battling, but uh, having a little bit of tough time with the way the Knapp team is doing it today. Yeah, the NAP team has definitely been on point today. They've actually played, uh, they really struggled in their first game in this bond spiel, but managed to come out with a win. And then the, the second and third games, they played really well, and they've carried that over today. Like this a couple of good corner guards there by Josh, and he got some good separation between those two, which is going to make a, a more difficult to make a double peel for the NAP team. Yes, great shots there, and the nap front end uh, player there, Trent, also setting up the end very nice with that top four, Bumper, yeah. top 12, pretty much parallel in line. Yeah, it makes a big difference when you're trying to defend if your lead can get the, the two shots in a perfect spot like that, because it makes it a lot tougher for, for Clyder oh. to get those rocks oh. into a position where oh. you can use no, the corner no, no. guards. Trent. If those rocks were behind Trent. the T-line, Totally on, different Trent. story. Trent. No, Trent, Trent, Trent. Uh, so attempting to the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a very difficult shot to play yeah. with that weight. And you know, because the guards are just staggered like that, it, it kind, of, kind of is a bit of an easy double. It's probably, I wouldn't What's mind up? just leaving those, because I think my next shot goes both of them. With a four point lead, no need to really get any more yards up front either. No, and I think Ryland will, will start coming around now. You know, Dean, I always found one of the difficult things about playing with three players is the, the sweeper being all by himself, not only uh, carrying a little bit more of a load, but a, a lot more difficult to, to judge weight on draws when you're sweeping by yourself. And, the, the good front ends get very good at good. back and forth, t talking to each other all the way down yeah. the ice, and it really becomes a, a kind of a, a teammate thing to, to judge weight. And uh, for Trevor, who of course is used to, to sweeping with Matt all the time, I'm sure that he's finding it a lot more difficult to, to judge weight all by himself. I would agree with you 100%. Yeah, that's not the, the easiest thing. And um, we were talking earlier this weekend that there was a, a team, and I think it was Aaron Stujinski maybe out of Alberta, um, that plays with three on purpose. They're just a three-person team. And, and I know they play a lot of mixed doubles as well, so maybe they see the, yeah. the value in throwing a really lot of hard. Stuff, a lot of stones really and only having the need of a one-sweeper. Because I think you'd agree that 
that one sweeper is doing 90% of the, the work when they are sweeping. Um, however, I agree with you, the judging is uh, probably the bigger part of that equation. Yeah, I, I agree, Dean, and, and you're right. The, the, the sweeper that's furthest from the rock is not having really that much of an impact, as the, the science has shown us. They've done a lot of testing on that. But it, uh, it does make a difference for sure as, as far as the teamwork of judging weight. And you are seeing, I think, a lot more teams when they are missing a player just decide to go with three rather than pick up a spare. Just because they're they're you they're you know you're, you're introducing a, a whole new piece to the chemistry. Mine's good. Trevor Johnson really good. Uh, looks to get a second one behind. It's a bit of a corner there, but it's fairly high. So maybe they're going to another guard. So they are coming. Yeah, just Just a bit light, but yeah, that's, still, that's, still, a, that's still a pretty good shot, though. We'll still give the Clyder team an opportunity to get two more rocks around that tight guard. Brandon Jones now has to ask to remove that red rock. And I'm not sure that he even really wants to stay here. Uh, feel out with the call. So the question will be, when do you when do you do make a play on those yellows and get in behind, uh, and when will Map decide that it's time to guard those two? And I think this is the right call. I, th I think you come around one more time. I think you are going to have to do something with those center guards on on Trevor's uh, final shot, which would be the sixth shot at the end. Does the other guy not want me to do it? I think Trevor makes this one good and Matt decides. I know with a, with a five point lead, he's probably not going to do this, but he's probably uh, throwing that center guard right on the center line would make it really difficult. Looks like with this shot coming up way light, that it'll be uh, not much of a issue for Matt now. Yeah, there's no sense peeling that yellow corner guard now. play that center guard, which will probably leave the only option for Clyder with his last is to try to go back four foot, perhaps, with his dudes. Okay, we got room. Line's good. Good now. Line's good. Line's perfect. So, Brandon Jones. Gonna curl it a bit. Nice guard coming here. Mike, Mike, go, go, go. We really gotta go on this. Really gotta go. Really gotta go. Really gotta go, really gotta go Mike. Come on, come on. Okay. Wait for the broom. Looks like he left enough open on that intern that Ryland can play a soft weight hit and roll. Yeah, I think you are right there, Brian. There, I kind of maybe split the reds in for now, but with only three rocks to go, I'm not sure 
that you're going to have a chance yeah. to get, a get those other finish. yellows out if you don't make any kind of play. Just play. Like the, the back eight foot weight in turn okay. tap on the top yellow and roll behind the corner. Yeah, I like that too. And good things can happen. You could pick the guard and roll in behind the corner. There's a few options. You can go they right around it. Be buried in the 12th court. You should, you should get a bit of curl here. Looks like they're playing the, the raise uh, split. Which is uh, certainly a great shot if they make it. This is a really difficult shot, though. This one has never been practiced. I'll guarantee you that one. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Ah. All right. And this one is in the, the wrong area code there. What a shot. But he does actually have worked, the red out, in. worked out not that badly. He managed to get the center guard off and get a red into the rings. It's worked out very well for him, actually. And the center cannot be, they can't take it out either because it's very good. Well, Trevor deserved the break like that because uh, most of the weekend he's been on the wrong side of the inch by just missing a few that could have went either way. So it's good to see that he, he got, he's got his first break of the weekend. Yeah, he's been actually a little bit unlucky on a few shots today too. He had a, a double attempt in the, the fourth end when Knapp got four that he really just missed by less than an inch and uh, didn't turn out that well. He also made that huge double in the third end though that set up the deuce for Kleider. That was. So it looks like Kelly's just trying to just trying to replace that center guard. Mine's a little tighter. Mine's good. Mine's good. Yeah, the tighter's gonna have to hopefully get some sort of double stick. It's always Mike. As a way down, that line looks pretty good. Tight three. Always Mike. You're not. You're not deep. Mine's really good. Yep. Nice shot, Kelly. Really good job. Pretty much perfection there. That's the kind of shot you like to see as a sweeper. You just clean it all the way down. Line was perfect. They didn't really have to go hard for line or for weight. And the, the, the good part about it is he did expose the correct side of the rock too, right? He exposed the other one. Excuse me, that didn't have that little chap and roll a second one under the corner, but now that, that option is not going to be the best. You play this. Because it opens up. You can make this, right? So, hey, that's probably the best, actually. That gives us a chance for free. Take the pain off there. Yep. Good time to do it. Yep. This is harder, but it also gets the 7 out of the way of the 4. That's the only thing you want. Yeah. Well, I should have the other one. Yeah, this is like, just take that pain off, yep. right? Yeah, pin 8, I would say. Yeah. Pin 8. Uh, I'll go in the teal and normal. Normal right here. What do you see here, oh, Brian? Is there an uh, outturned cap? Well, actually, I don't see a lot of good options. It, it, it's going to be really difficult to, to uh, get a rock in a spot that you can use it on your next one. Actually, I, I don't mind this call. It looks like he's playing a really thin slice and trying to go into that top yellow. And hopefully for, for Kleider, he'll be able to roll the, the shooter in behind the, the corner guards and, and then maybe get a shot at that rock with a slash on his last one. But just not a lot of good options right now. No, and I agree that redirect is probably the best option, not a very easy shot, but it's probably still the best option. Oh. Oh. Fighter with his first shot oh, here at no. number six, trailing seven to two. Yep, yep. Gonna get a little in off. Uh, yeah. This is going to miss I don't see a score by a fair there. bit. So that will be uh, zero on the stat sheet there, I think, on that one. I think Nap's going to end up just taking away the only shot Fighter has, and that is to drop four foot. He can uh, 
Lucas, he can't take away both sides of the forefoot, but he will definitely take away whichever he takes is the easier one. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I'm, I'm not really sure what, what the discussion is here because that seems to me the obvious shot is to take away that outturn draw. It's still going to leave an in-turn through the hole for Ryland, but that's a lot more difficult shot. But perhaps they were maybe just talking about uh, making sure they don't set up some kind of triple here. I'm not sure if you can, but you, uh, if you do end up just biting the eight foot wide open, I guess it's potential to wiggle them through and maybe get some kind of triple going. But yeah. Line's good. Here by Kelly. T line. Line's real good. Wait a bit spot on there. Quite a bit spot, so it'll be a little back in there for Clyder to draw for his one. I don't think there's any other shot for any multiple. No, I don't see a two here anymore. Let's just try this. Whatever. Yeah. Or if it goes across the top and gets off. I'm going to throw it hard though. Try and hit this one right here. Yeah. So the only issue is I don't think it's ever. Thin quarter. Yeah. How hard are you throwing it? Like real hard. Oh. Looks like they're going to yeah. try something that's not a fun, but I don't think uh, there's an opportunity. That looks like not enough ice. Make any kind of triple here. It's better if he ricochets off the ready. I think Trevor is thinking this rock is going to be coming down so hard that sweeping it is not going to make much of a difference. The last rock here for Spider at number six. Going to do a redirect. He has it. Actually, pretty close. Great try. All right, so now. Takes a steal of two and goes up nine to seven after six. And I believe you'll see them shake hands and uh, want to wish the NAP team well. They they played really well and deserved the victory today. And uh, I'm sure they're going to go well the rest of the way here. So Brian, thanks a lot. Uh, had fun with you there here today. Yeah, that was fun, Dean. And uh, good luck to your team as well. And we'll we'll see you, I'm sure, in provincials. Yeah, you bet, Brian. Take care. <laughs> okay. Every trailblazer has naysayers, every innovator, cynics, every leader, skeptics. Anyone with a vision for their future has faced doubters in their past. So this is our message to the doubters. You can't stop this farmer. You can't stop invention. You can't stop progress. You can't stop science. You can't stop this farmer. You can't stop family. You can't stop heart. You can't stop harvest. You can't stop this farmer. You can't stop the desire to make your mark, make your fortune, and make anyone who has ever doubted eat their words. You can't stop this farmer. So let's silence the doubters. Let's outgrow, let's outyield, let's outwork, let's outsmart. Let's look to the future and bust through. A co-op is not a building. It's not a grocery store. It's not a gas station. A co-op is a group of people who come together to build up their community, to help their neighbors, to make a difference. And so they start local businesses that are member-owned, businesses that give back. 
Western Canadian co-ops have been quietly doing it this way for more than 100 years. Well, it's time to speak up. It's time to celebrate. And it's time to see that there is another way. An alternative to big businesses that ship their profits out of Canadian communities. An alternative that is built for everyone. An alternative that is built on Canadian values. We are a different kind of business. We are member-owned. We are co-op. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. You are what matters most. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be a part of your community. From the dance competitions, to the rodeos, to helping discover and embrace technology across the province. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Every year, SASTEL contributes nearly $3 million to approximately 1,000 nonprofits, charities, associations, and events in more than 200 communities across Saskatchewan. So keep dancing, keep laughing, keep discovering, and we'll be there to help, to lend a hand, and join in the fun. SASTEL cares, always has, always will, because we are dedicated to our home. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships.